Hello everyone, and welcome to K-Riggs Art. I'm Kimberly Riggs, and this is my first tutorial. So I checked out some of the other perspective video here on YouTube, and have come to the conclusion that uh, the basics are really well covered. So instead, I want to teach you a few tips and tricks that you can use and ensure technical accuracy in your drawings. So as with all perspective drawings, you need to start with a horizon and at least one vanishing point. I'll start with one perspective this week, and in my next tutorial, I'll go into two point. Okay, let's start by drawing a box. Since this is one point perspective, all of my horizontals are parallel to the horizon line, and all of my verticals are perpendicular to the horizon line. Any lines that indicate depth will converge at that vanishing point. To find the middle of a box, draw an X. Where the two lines meet is going to be the very middle of your object. If you wish to duplicate your box with the same dimensions, say you're drawing a bunch of row houses and all need to be the same size, you'll want to find the middle of your box. Remember, you do this by drawing an X. Now make a line from the middle of that X all the way to your vanishing point. Okay, so you have the middle point of all of your houses mapped out. Take a line from the top of the closest point on your box through the middle point of the far end of your box and bring it all the way down to that bottom line, which indicates the bottom of your house. Now draw a vertical line straight up from that point and you have two identical boxes. You can continue this technique on down the line until you have the number of boxes you want. One thing you'll want to keep in mind while drawing, um, as objects move away from the viewer and closer to the horizon line, they will appear smaller and closer together. This technique works if you want to make all of your objects to be the same size, but sometimes you'll need to draw a repeating pattern. Say, you're drawing a bunch of windows, all of the windows are two feet across, and the space in between them is four feet. Um, <laughs> sounds like a bad word problem, huh? <laughs> so, um, you have a repeating spaces in varied sizes. How do you calculate that? Well, just like in my previous example, you want to find the middle line of your object. I've drawn my X in the second space, as I need to know where the exact middle of that object is. Then I'll take my line from the top point of my first object through the middle point of my second object down to the bottom line. Bring my vertical up from that line, and now I have a space that is proportionally the same as the first one. Now let's do another one that is proportionally the same as my second space. Draw your X through the middle of the third space you have just drawn. Take a line from that, the top of your second space through the middle point of your third space and down to the bottom line. Draw your vertical, and there you have a space that is proportionally the same as your second. You can carry this on down the line as far as you wish. If that didn't make sense, um, it is a little bit complicated, please send me a message and I will do my best to clarify. Okay, so now how do we draw a circle in perspective? Well, you first draw a box. If you can draw a box in perspective, you can draw anything in perspective. Draw an X to find the middle of that box. Okay, now draw a line from the center of that X to the vanishing point, and draw a horizontal line from the middle of the X to each edge of your box. Now you know where the middle of each line of your box is. Your circle will touch the box at each of these points. What you have done is create four identical squares within your box. Now draw a diagonal through each of these. This isn't an absolutely necessary step, but I find it helpful to de determine the size of my circle. 
Now, the edges of that circle will need to land on the far side of each of those diagonals. Now you can draw your circle. Now you can see that I did this process on the top and the bottom of my cube. This way you can see how the bottom circle appears larger and more rounded than the top circle. As the edge of that circle gets closer to the horizon line, you essentially see less of it. Uh, try taking a plate or another flat object, a CD would work well here, um, and without moving your head, hold it below your eyesight. It won't appear perfectly rounded, but you'll be able to see the entire surface. Now move that CD or plate upward and notice how what you see changes. If you end up with it at eye level, um, if that object is flat, the most you'll see of it is a flat line across. Okay, um, now that I have two identical circles on top of each other, um, I can connect the edges to make a cylinder. I'll shade it in here to make it a little bit easier to see. Now grab your CD or plate, or really any other object, and if you hold it above your eye line, you'll see the bottom of the object, but if you hold it below your eye line, you'll see the top of it. This seems elementary, but it's a good thing to keep in mind when drawing anything in perspective. If you are looking up at it, if you see the bottom of it, it's going to be above that horizon line. Okay, um, one thing to note when drawing anything circular. A circle in perspective is an ellipse. Its height will be different from its width. Um, when drawing an ellipse, make sure your ends don't come to a point like an American football. There are no corners on a circle, therefore there should be no corners on an ellipse. All right, um, <laughs> let's sum up. Uh, to draw something in perspective, you need a horizon line and at least one vanishing point. In one point perspective, all horizontals are parallel and all verticals are perpendicular. If you can draw a box, you can draw anything. X's are your new best friend, and ellipses are circles in perspective. I hope this helps, and if you have any questions, or if I didn't make any sense, if, <laughs> if I didn't make sense at any point in this video, um, or if you just want to say hi, please just leave me a comment below. Next week, I'll be posting another time-lapse drawing. If you're a fan of Tom Hiddleston, this is one you'll definitely not want to miss. And as always, if you like this content, please hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell so you know when I have uploaded new content. Thanks so much for watching and have a great week. Bye.